Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to talk about the callback library divergence. I want to give some intuition for it, then we will calculate a simple example, and in the end we will see how it is implemented in TensorFlow probability. So we're talking about the callback library divergence. So we're talking about something which allows us to measure how far two distributions are apart. This seems a little bit strange at first, so let me give you some intuition for it. Assume you have numbers on the real line. So let's say, for instance, you have an A with 2 and a B, which is 5, two variables. And your task is to find the distance between A and B. And what you would probably do is you say, well, the distance measure is A minus B and then take the absolute. And that's correct. That allows you to infer how far they are apart. If you go one step further and you are in a coordinate system with an x1 and an x2 and you have two variables here, for instance an a vector which is at position 1, 1 and a b vector which is at position 4, 2 and you are again asked what is the distance between A and B. So what you would do is you say, well, the distance of A and B is the norm of the difference between the two vectors. And for instance, you choose the two norm in order to be the, the shortest distance in this Euclidean space. Now we are looking at distributions. So we look at something that is associating a value of x or an instantiation of x with a potential or with a probability of how likely this value is to occur. And let us assume you have two distributions here. So you have one distribution that looks like this, which you would call p of x, and you have another distribution so let's also put this here, which is a little shifted, it's a little sharper, and you call this the Q of X. And now the question is, what is the distance between P and Q? Or in other terms, what is the distance between two distributions? Well, that's kind of hard to say. I mean, they, they, they look different. They, they have nothing to do with those kind of points. But the callback library divergence allows us to find a measure how far they are apart or how different they are or how different the description of these two is for our random variable. So this is where the KL divergence comes in. And the KL divergence is defined as D index KL of P double vertical line Q and it is defined as the expectation over X distributed by P of X of the logarithm of P of X divided by Q of X. And this obviously depends on whether X is a discrete or a continuous variable and so we have to define the expectation respectively and this results in either a summation over x over all possible states of x times p of x of p of x times the logarithm of p of x divided by q of x and that is if x is discrete and it is the integral over all possible ranges of x or values of x of p of x times the logarithm of p of x divided by q of x if x is continuous. And you might ask yourself, okay, this is called a divergence and we actually wanted to calculate the distance. And it is called divergence because of a reason, since this particular expression that we use here does not have all the properties of a distance. So the KL divergence does not 
have all properties of a distance. Properties of a distance measure. Therefore, we are not calling it a distance, but conceptually, it is doing something that distance measure also does. It allows us to have an, the informed decision on how far two things are apart or how far the description of a random variable is apart from another. Okay, this might seem a little abstract at first. So for this, let us look at an example. And I want to look at an example where our x is discrete. And we are not just looking at an x, we look at a particular um, problem and we look at the weather and we say in really simple terms, the weather can either be bad or it can be good. And we call our weather a capital W and say that W takes values in bad and good. So these are two states and we encode them as zero and one. And this of course rings a bell. Great. This is the Bernoulli distribution and which means that W is distributed according to a Bernoulli with a parameter theta and theta this was the probability of good weather. So this is the probability of good weather. And now consider the following scenario. You have um, two people arguing about the weather and one says, okay, I think that good weather appears with probability of 80%. And someone else says, okay, I say it's only 70%. And then you assume those two have this kind of theta value and you predict 365 samples with this particular theta value. And you then want to know how far those two data sets that you get out are apart from each other or like how different they are. And we can give a measure for this by evaluating how high the Chi-L divergence is between those two distributions. So we have a W and we have a person one, which says theta A is 80%. And so he says that W is distributed with a Bernoulli, with a Bernoulli, with a theta A, which is our P of W distribution. And a person two is saying that theta is actually 0 0.7 and he says that um, w is distributed according to a Bernoulli of theta b which is our q and the question is how far apart are their distributions or how far apart are their opinions okay for this, let us look at the KL divergence. So we want to calculate the KL divergence, so DKL of P and Q. And for this, since we said W is a discrete variable, we take the discrete format. And of course we exchange X with a W because we now have just a different name for our random variable. And we have, this is W of, it's W of, P of W times the logarithm of P of W over Q of W. And now we have to evaluate the summation. And since W can take two states, zero and one, this is just a sum of zero and one. So essentially what we're doing is we have a small W, not a capital W anymore, going from zero to one. And here we plug in P of W is our small w times the logarithm of p of big w is our small w divided by q of big w is our small w and then we evaluate this. So now we said that the two people think it's a Bernoulli just with a different parameter. So let us recall what was a Bernoulli. So a Bernoulli with a theta, with a general theta was or let's say a Bernoulli of W distributed with theta is an 
theta to the w times 1 minus theta to the 1 minus w. So we just plug it in and this is a little bit tedious. So one step after the other, this is the summation. So first p of big W small w. So we have theta a times, and it is first zero, times one minus theta a to the one minus zero, times the logarithm of theta a times one minus theta a to the, oh, sorry, of course, this is zero, not a theta, one minus zero. And this is two to the zero. And here we have theta b to the zero times one minus theta b to the one minus zero plus a theta a to the one times one minus theta a to the one minus one times a logarithm of theta a to the one times one minus theta a to the one minus one and we have divide we will divide by a theta b to the one times the one minus theta b to the one minus one and this is our summation evaluated okay let's look at how these terms boil down here theta a to the power of zero this is of course this is one and so in total this becomes one minus theta a the same is true for here this is one minus theta a and here we have 1 minus theta b. And here we have theta a to the 1, which is theta a. And 1 minus theta a to the 0 is 1. So we just get theta a here. This will also be theta a. And this will be theta b. Okay, so we get 1 minus theta a times the logarithm of 1 minus theta a over 1 minus theta b plus theta a times the logarithm of theta a over theta b. And now we said that we have particular values for theta a and theta b. So we can evaluate this expression and for this let us bring over a terminal and open up an interactive Python session. Then we get ourselves numpy and then let's plug in so we have 1 minus and theta a was 0 0.8 times the logarithm of 1 minus 0 0.8 divided by 1 minus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.8 times the logarithm of, and here we have 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.7. And what we get here is 0 0.0257. And this is our measure of the kullback leibler divergence. So in essence, this is the distance between the two opinions. Okay, lastly, let us look at TensorFlow probability. We go back to Python. And first I will all import a package in order to suppress TensorFlow warnings. Then we need TensorFlow probability. This time we don't need TensorFlow. And then we have to define um, our two weather probabilities or weather distributions. Let's call this weather A. And it is a TensorFlow probability distributions Bernoulli with a probability of 0 0.8. This was what our first person was saying. And whether B is essentially the same, just with a different probability of 0 0.7. And we can then, for example, observe the weather 365 times with A and B and look how often it's good or bad weather, but we are interested in the KL divergence. And we do this with TFP distributions, KL divergence, and then we plug in those two objects. So we plug in weather A and weather B. And we see the value we get out here is exactly the same value as we calculated it with NumPy. And you also see that this is a measure of distributions. So we plug in objects that are related to distributions. I mean, whether A is 
a distribution. It's a Bernoulli distribution. And I want to also show you one particular um, or one another of the KL divergence properties is that if we change what we have in here, we won't get the same value. And this is the reason or one of the reasons it is called a divergence and not a distance because it is not symmetric. So take care which um, you put in as the first argument and which you put in as the second argument.